I'm going to be talking to Amanda Thompson, who's a researcher with the Conference Board of Canada, about a recent study that she completed. And it's about the Atlan Hydro Project, which is a run of the river project in northern BC, with, that was undertaken by the Taku River Tlingit First Nation. So welcome to the interview, uh, Amanda. Hi, thanks for having me. Look, why don't we start, just give us uh, an overview of the study, please. Okay, sure. So the project was completed um, by the Center for the North, which is a research initiative that we have at the conference board. It kind of just pools um, senior leaders from Indigenous groups um, and private and public sector to pool resources and develop research projects that are top of mind for people um, living in Canada's North, as well as Indigenous populations across uh, the country. So uh, per Indigenous participation in clean energy is growing in Canada, and the Atlan Hydro Project is an example excellent example of this because the Taku River Klingit First Nation are whole owners and operators of the project. So the project is run by them. Um, so what we wanted to look at was kind of one, what were the challenges that the Taku River Klingit First Nation had in completing the project, as well as something a little bit different than a lot of other researchers has looked at is what were the health and well-being impacts on the actual community members of participating in the project. Um, so researchers from the conference board uh, made a trip to Atlin and conducted approximately 50 interviews um, with people living in the community. Well, this is very interesting because uh, the, the, this First Nation is located in, in BC. And BC has indicated that as it expands its power generation, it's going to be looking to First Nations for these kinds of projects, wind, solar, and I guess uh, run of the river, small hydro, we might call it. And so uh, there'll be more of these, I would imagine, in coming years. So what were some of the challenges, like the technical challenges, managerial challenges that the First Nation faced? So the First Nation recognized that they had very little limited capacity in terms of the, the skills that they needed for this project. These projects required great amount of project management skills as well as technical and financial expertise. Um, in recognizing that and being whole owners of the project, they actually leveraged private sector private sector experts. So they worked alongside them across the entire project and were able to learn from them. Since completing this project, they've actually become experts in the field of Indigenous um, clean energy. They're actually completing an expansion to the hydro project, which is actually um, front and center in Yukon's 10-year renewable energy plan. So they've really become experts and learned a lot in completing this project and working alongside um, kind of the experts in the field. Yeah, that kind of uh, model, it seems to be very uh... Uh, successful uh, in, in the Indigenous communities. And are, are they planning then on putting together an organization or a company that will assist other First Nations in doing similar projects? I don't know about that. However, I do know that they are part of several um, initiatives. I can't remember the name of the organization that kind of uh, work with, not work with other First Nations, but inform um, other uh, organizations that have to do with, you know, developing uh, clean energy programs in First Nation communities. So they, they kind of uh, contribute to those uh, committees and organizations, but the specifics, I'm not totally sure. So what this project did, it sounds like, is, uh, is not only just create employment, which is always important, but also a, a range of skills that uh, wouldn't have been, they wouldn't have been able to develop otherwise. Yes, that's right, for sure. I mean, a lot of the employment comes during the construction phase of the project, um, but they do have operators now who, uh, one First Nation operator who actually is involved in the daily uh, running of the project, but this like small run of the river hydro projects have a very small workforce um, associated with them anyway. So most of the employment opportunities came during the construction. So what has been the project's impact on the community? So from what we looked at in terms of the impact of the community on health and well-being, we've seen that there is quite a positive impact on the community. More in terms of the positive impact that the project has on social determinants of health in the community, which are just the conditions in which people live and grow and they're precursors to health. They predict health behaviors and population health. So what we found was one of the things, the community has had a move off diesel to uh, clean energy 
um, for their primary source of energy in the community. Secondly, like we talked about, while participating in the project, they build human resource capacity that they've been able to use to, to develop subsequent economic projects, such as the expansion of the hydro project. And this has really just helped them sort of get on their way going to building a sustainable economic future in their community. One of the main positive impacts is the own source revenue that the project um, results in. So the First Nation now has money from coming in annually from the project that they invest back into the community in a way that makes sense for their community. So in their case, um, like I said before, they've taken money and invested it into subsequent economic projects, as well as investing money in community um, in community ventures in the project, so community programming. So they've invested in education programs for the residents, as well as um, cultural and language programming for the residents. Uh, last question, Amanda. Uh, is this kind of approach uh, a good way for Indigenous communities, especially those in, in the north or rural areas, you know, where they're not uh, near a, a, an industry, for instance, that could create a uh, employment uh, for for First Nation members is this a good way to to begin building that local uh, local economy that can then eventually sustain the community. I think so. I mean, in the case of um, Atlan and the Tack River Clean at First Nation, the project has had numerous benefits, both in terms of um, their uh, subsequent economic development, as well as building up skills in the community and their readiness to take on subsequent projects. So Amanda, thank you very much for this. Okay, thank you. Thanks for having me.